Papa Flammy Zapping Calendar. Slash Calendar. Never mind, whatever you want to call it, you know how the tour goes. Amazing deals on stemmerch.com, stemmerch.eu and my personal tea string shop. Link down in the description as well as coupon codes uh, over the course of the whole advent calendar. And today we are going to take a look at a very interesting problem. Many of you people might know that I became a woodworker quite a while ago. And recently over on Flemish Wood I started my series on mathematics for woodworkers. And today on the same day as this video came out, there's also another episode coming out on mathematics for woodworkers related to what we are going to do here today. So if you haven't watched it already, please go over to Flemish Wood, watch the whole video for the entire context. Okay, and also you can support the other channel this way. Now let me explain for a little second what the problem is about. Namely, sometimes woodworkers want to create round tables in, in some kind of way. So we get some kind of circle. That's a beautiful individual. Now, in a normal case, how you cut a circle is you put something in, in the middle that you are going to pivot around and then you are going to cut it out. Now, if you were to just place, for example, a complete square here, and then you are going to cut out a, a circle from this complete square, then you are going to notice that you are going to basically waste a lot of wood in the process. Meaning we need to find a way to basically approximate the area better such that we don't waste that much wood. And how would you as a mathematician approximate this area? Let's say we want to approximate it using four planks of wood. Well, I would do it like this. I would divide my circle up, okay, with a diameter. Then using a tangent line, I'm going to divide it up like this, okay? Then this right here is going to be the first plank and this the second plank. Now, where this line meets our circle again, the intersection, I'm going to place the last plank. Okay, and the planks are all going to be the same um, size basically when it comes to the base. And this is how you can more efficiently approximate a circle basically. By wasting way less material. If you take a look, those four parts would have been waste in normal case. But this way we can stop getting more waste from this. And I'm teaching that over there on the other channel. And I, uh, I asked myself the question, um, what the general expressions are going to be when it comes to calculating how, long's the, uh, how, how long the boards must be and all the other parameters that um, go inside of such a problem. And this is what we are going to figure out today too. And I hope you are going to enjoy the video. So at first we are going to take a look um, at all the even cases, four boards, six boards. We are going to leave out two boards because two boards are just going to uh, give us a square overall. This is not something that we want. So four boards, six boards, etc. Let us start off with four boards. And for this problem, since it's nice and symmetric, we only need to take a look at the upper part of our circle, okay? Just a semicircle. But since it's the even case, we can do it even easier than that. And just take a look at a quarter circle. Just this part right here basically, okay? This is just our only part of interest. Now, now I'm going to project it here once again. Now what we are going to get if we approximate our circle is we are going to get one rectangle like this and then we are going to get another rectangle. This is for the case n being equal to four, four planks. Now what we need to find out is how high must our plank be, okay? Our board. So Obviously, this board right here is going to have a height of, well, two times the radius if we want to take a look at the full board. So this part right here is just going to be the radius r overall. But how high must this other board be that we got right here? Now we can project the right triangle hint into here, obviously. Now we know since if we take a look at our construction, if we just rotate our radius, we are going to land at this point here once again. That's the intersection between our circus arc and our board once again. So meaning this length right here is once again our radius. This is nice. Now this right here is the length that we are looking for. Let's, let's call it L1 for example. Now, what about the part that we got down here? Okay, taking a look at, at our sketch, you are going to notice that this right here, this whole length that we got from here to there is our radius r. But since we want to um, break it up into two boards of equal sizes with the same base, this part right here is going to result in r over 2. Meaning we can now make use of Papa Pythagoras and that's an L1 and not a 4. Meaning if we were to solve for our L1, we are going to get that L1 by Papa Pythagoras is nothing other than the square root of R squared minus mm, 
r squared divided by four, basically. Or in other words, I'm going to um, use the square on the outside, this right here, okay? Or if we were to factor out our r squared on both numerator and denominator, we are going to get that this is nothing other than r times the square root of one minus one half squared. And don't forget, this right here is our length L1. And the length that we get on the middlemost board is going to be L0, okay, which is equal to R. Okay, now we figured out what the case is going to be for n being equal to 4. And since everything is nice and, and symmetric, this length L1 is the same as this length, and is the same as this length, and this length. Okay, nice. What about n being equal to 6? Let us proceed a bit further. n being equal to 6. What does our sketch look like? on this part. I mean, once again, we are going to get the part with L0 being equal to R. Then we are going to get our next rectangle and last but not least our last rectangle. Now, what about our base that we got down here? I mean, this first part. How are we going to break up our radius this time? I mean, in two thirds, okay? This right here is R over three. This whole length that we got right here is going to be 2r over 3. And this last length is not going to matter if we take a look at the construction once again. Let us construct a triangle here, okay? That's once again our radius r, and this right here is length number 1. And then for next construction, this right here, since we have this construction right here where our radius always meets basically where our, um, where our uh, rectangles are going to meet our circle. We are also going to know that this right here is our radius r once again, and this right here is our length number two. Now we can use Papa Pythagoras once again. Now we are going to notice that we are going to get that L1 is nothing other than, once again, we can factor out our r squared, okay, with the square root, giving us r times the square root of. Now, what we are going to get is, okay, this time we are going to get one third, but squared and with a one minus in front. Min one minus one third squared. And all of this in square roots. Now what about L2? If we take a look at L2, radius, factored out, square root of, we are always going to get a factor of one right here, the sum of one in the front. And now we are just going to square our numbers that we got right here. So two thirds but squared. Maybe you can already spot a tiny little pattern here. But let us go with the odd cases for now. And then the pattern becomes extremely clear. For the odd cases, it's a bit different when it comes to the partition of our bases that we got on here. Oh, now, now I um, used a word that I didn't want to use up until the end of the video, but you can probably uh, figure out what we are doing here all the time. Now, if we take a look at um, n being equal to three. Now, what is going to happen if we have n being equal to three? We have to take a look at the whole semicircle. We are going to divide it into thirds, like this. Now, we are going to approximate our area like this. This time is a bit different. Once again, we are going to have that the height of our, um, of our middlemost rectangle is going to be, so L0 being equal to R. This is always the case. But how is it with the height of our other rectangle that we are looking for? Now, by the same construction that we got right here, Hmm, does this work out once again? I mean, um, if we do this construction, what are you going to notice here? Well, thing is, we don't know what this length is because it can only be the radius just as before if it starts from the center of the circle. So we need to break this up a tiny little bit more, meaning our problem is going to transform in something of that sort. If we take a look at just a quarter circle once again, we are going to get half the rectangle here, where this part right here is going to be the center of our circle, and this right here is the next rectangle. Now, we can do the same construction as before. This right here is our radius r. That's going to be our length one. But what about our other side that we got down here? How long is that side? Now, let us take a look at our sketch. Now, this right here is our radius. And don't forget that our boards are going to be of the same base. Now, we are going to half our board space from the middle, meaning this right here is half the size of this board. But all of these side lengths down here combined are going to give us our radius, meaning this part right here must be the radius divided by three. Okay, I hope it does make sense to you. We are going to get three equal parts down here, giving us overall our radius, meaning one part must be the radius over three. 
Meaning overall in the process, our L1 in the odd case is going to result overall in, okay, we are going to get R factored out square root one minus, and now we are just going to get one quarter, uh, not one quarter, one third squared once again. Okay, now what about our case with five? Okay, n being equal to five. If we take a look at n being equal to five, we are going to get a sketch like this. So we need five equal pieces, one, two, um, three, four. Okay, something of that sort. Now let me take a look at the innermost one. It should look something like this. Then we are going to get this part and this, uh, like this and like this, last but not least. Now, once again, we are going to break everything up. We are going to make a cut here such that our line is going to start at this point. Now, our sketch is going to look something like this. Once again, by the same argument, this right here is going to be our radius r. The height of the middlemost one is going to be L0 being equal to r, obviously. Now, we need to figure out what this part down here is if this adjacent or opposite whatsoever is going to be our length one once again. Now this part down here by the same arguments as before is this time not one third of our radius r because we are having uh, one part out of five this time okay since we have the same base boards meaning this right here is going to be r divided by five. Now what about the next one what about calculating l2? Calculating L2, okay, protecting our radius here once again. This right here is L2. And if we go over here, we are going to add R to R divided by 5, giving us 3R over 5. Meaning our L1, in our case N being equal to 5, is going to be equal to R times the square root of 1 minus, and this time R divided by 5, or just 1 fifth squared, because we factored out R already, 1 fifth squared. And our L2 is going to result in, okay, factoring out R, square root of 1 minus, and just taking the numbers here into consideration, 3 fifths squared. And now we need to find out a pattern. I'm going to write out all the information that we got for the lengths here, and then we are going to see how we can approximate the area precisely in the process. You are probably going to notice sooner or later what we are going to do next. Now I've written everything out and now we are going to see if we can spot a certain pattern for the length. At first let me clarify, if we want to generalize this to the nth board basically, what we are going to do is we are going to take a look at the even case as being something of that sort. We are going to divide it up into two equal sized boards, okay, sharing basically the middle and then we are going to have board with length 1, length 2, length 3, up until the i-th length, okay? This right here is our li in some way, where these are l0, l0, and once again we have l1 right here, l1 here, and so on. The pattern continues up until we reach li on both sides, okay? They are going to have the equal lengths. They are going to share it. What about the odd um, version? For the odd version it's a tiny little bit different, but mostly just the same you could say. For the middle board, it's only going to be one, okay? The middle is only going to be shared by one board in total, meaning we only have one board with L0, and then the pattern continues just like here. Then next to L0, we are going to have one with L1, with length one, and another one with length one, and all of this is going to continue up until Li, and Li on the other side. Now, let us take a look at the pattern that we have here, because there are actually pretty cool patterns arising here. If we take a look at n being equal to 4, what can we say about the number that we find in the numerator inside of the third right here? Now, we want to find an expression for our i-th board, li, for each and every case for some number n. Now our i-th board is going to have an r in each and every case here, and a square root and a 1 minus something r times the square root, 1 minus something. This something is going to be in parentheses and squared. Now what about the numerator and denominator? Let's start with the denominator. It becomes pretty clear that if we have n equals to 4, we are going to get 2 in the denominator here. 2 is 4 divided by 2. Now for the case n being equal to 6, we are going to get 
3 down here, 6 divided by 2. You can probably guess for the case n being equal to 8, we are going to get 4 down here in the denominator and so on and so forth. Meaning what we are going to get at all times is n divided by 2 down here in the denominator. Taking the reciprocal is going to give us n down here in the denominator and the 2 up here. Now what about our i? What about the index? Does it have to play any role inside of these expressions? Obviously yes. If we take a look at L1, we are going to get 1 half. If we take a look at L1 here, hmm, 1 third. L2, 2 thirds. L3, 3 fourths in our case, okay, when it comes to n being equal to 8. Meaning we are just going to get our i up here in the numerator. Oh, well, that's an even number up here that we are going to get, okay? Okay, coolio. I mean, there was already a um, pretty nice observation that we got right here. Now, what about our n being equal to odd? Okay, some kind of odd number. Once again, we're going to take a look at our li in some kind of way. Once again, we're going to get radius r and the square root of 1 minus something in parentheses squared. Now, what about the number in the denominator at first. Let's go with this one at first. Now for n being equal to 3, we are going to get 3 down here. Oh, that is rather boring. We don't need to think about this much. n being equal to 5, we are going to get 5 down here in the denominator. I mean, this is just n, obviously. That was easy. Now, what about our running index i? How does it play a role in here? Okay, we, we could make a wild guess. For, for L1, we are going to get 1. Okay, L1 here, 1. Meaning we have to put an i up here in the numerator? Mm, no, I don't think so, because the pattern breaks already for the next case. L2 giving us 3. Hmm. How are 2 and 3 connected? Hmm. 2 is on the one hand 2 plus 1. Oh, uh, 3 is 2 plus 1 on the one hand, but this pattern also doesn't hold for this first case, so 1 plus 1 would be 2. That doesn't work. So what about... Um, hmm, I said that we had an even number up here in the, the, num in the numerator. Now what about dealing with an odd number here maybe? Maybe this does help and this is how I spotted the pattern originally. Now how can we get from 2 to 3 by using a pattern for odd numbers. I mean obviously if we take 2 times 2, so 2 times our index minus 1, 2 times 2, 4 minus 1 is going to give us 3. Okay, does the pattern hold for 1? 2 times 1 is 2, minus 1, hey, g going to give us 1. And this is exactly the pattern which is going to arise. 2 times i minus 1. You see, even number up here, odd number up here. And this is pretty cool in my opinion. This is how you can calculate the length of your board. Obviously you need to take each and every individual length by two at all times because you don't want a semicircle, you want a full circle. But this is how it works. Now I went a step further and I wanted to try something out. Namely, if you're a mathematician, you're going to notice immediately that what we are going to do here with our circle, basically this approximation, is just taking a finite Riemann integral. Okay, finite in the sense that we are um, basically having finite partitions here at the moment. How can we approximate our area of the circle precisely? Well, by adding up infinitely many very, very small rectangles. Small when it comes to the base. Now, let us calculate the integral, basically, in its purest Riemann integral form, using on the one hand the even case, okay, and on the other hand the odd case. And I wrote a little Python script, which you can find down there in the description, okay, written and also at the end of the video, where I see if my um, approximation turns out to be the real thing when it comes to taking a look at just the regular area of a circle. Let us start with the case for an even. As mentioned a second ago, what we want to do is we want to end up infinitely many rectangles to find the air or infinitely many areas of rectangles. Now, what we want to have is equidistant partitions, meaning all the bases of our boards or rectangles must be the same. Now we just need to find out what the base is actually going to be overall. Now if we take a look at the case n being equal to 6 for example. Now all of this is going to be our diameter. Diameter is 2 times the radius you could say and we are going to split our diameter up into basically the number of our rectangles, okay? Our um, di diameter divided by, in this case, 2, 4, this is supposed to be a 6 in case. Um, 
diameter divided by six. And since the diameter is nothing other than two times the radius, this is basically just two times our radius divided by our number n, where our n is even. So our base, let's call it b, is nothing other than two times the radius divided by our number of rectangles n. This right here is the base of each and every rectangle since we have equidistant partitions. Okay, now what about the length of our rectangles? Well, this is easy. We just now calculated what the length of each and every rectangle is going to be. And now all we really need to do is to, well, basically turn this into an area. Area is just base times height, meaning overall the area of each and every rectangle the area of the i rectangle is going to result in our li times this expression. So r times the square root of 1 minus, and then we are going to get 2i divided by n squared times, and now in our case 2r divided by n, okay, meaning this is just r squared in our case, and then we have a 2n at the back. Now we are going to add up all of our rectangles and then we are basically done calculating the integral. But we need to go a step further here because as mentioned before, what we are doing at the moment is we are just going to take a look at a quarter circle at the moment. But since everything is nice and symmetric, what we are going to do is we are going to take this area and the quarter circle of infinitely many rectangles times four, meaning we are going to fill out the whole circle overall and then we are basically good to go. So, our Riemann sum in this process is um, the whole area of the circle is the limit as n approaches infinity. Since we want to have infinitely many rectangles, meaning we need to make the partition smaller and smaller, more and more rectangles, which is um, our n basically. Now, next up, what we are going to do is we are going to take four times the area of our rectangle. Okay, each and every rectangle, every i rectangle times four four times. And now we are going to add all of our rectangles up. Adding it up means we are going to take the sum from, hmm, where is our index going to start? Our index is going to start at zero, i being equal to zero, up until, well, hmm, if we have n rectangles over the whole diameter, we are going to have n over two rectangles over the radius. Meaning it starts from i being equal to zero to n divided by two. And all of this with regards to what we got up here. So 2r squared divided by n times the square root of 1 minus 2i divided by n squared. And this right here is probably, okay, in the limit equal to, okay, with a, with a little question mark, pi r squared, probably, okay? Python script later in a minute. Yeah, this right here is the case for the area on an even n. Now, what about odd n? I mean, our argument with the base really doesn't change. Our base in every case is equal to 2r divided by n. Our area for individual uh, rectangles also doesn't change. So is the formula the same, just with the um, other li plugged in? No, it's not. We need to be a bit more careful here. Please take note that we only took it four times because everything was nice and, and symmetric. Our L0 was um, on the left hand side too and then down here on both sides too. But here our L0 is only once in the middle. So to calculate our area we are going to take two times the area of L0. Okay, so let me get this straight. We are going to take as the area the limit as n approaches infinity of two times the area for the L0 rectangle. The area of the L0 rectangle is going to be the base, basically, base, basically. <laughs> so two times r divided by n times, well, the height of L0, but the height of L0 in every case is nothing other than r, so r squared. Okay, and we're going to take it two times. So two times this quantity is going to give us four in the process. And now we can proceed how we did before. Namely, we are going to take four times the summation over all the other rectangles because this time, okay, we are going to have L1, L2, etc. here on the left hand side and down here too. Meaning overall, what we are going to do is we are going to add to it 
um, four times the summation from. Okay, i being equal to, in our case, we need to start at one this time. Okay, there's no way around it. We need to start at one because our zero of rectangle is already gone in our case. And to which one need to go up here? So in the case, for example, for five, we are going to go up until L2. L2 with regards to n being equal to five is five minus one over two. So n minus one over two. Okay, and now we can just plug our definition in. Our base is once again two times r divided by n times our length, okay, our li. Our li is one minus, and we notice that this is two i minus one divided by n, but the whole thing squared. And this right here is the formula that we get for the case n being equal to odd. And once again, we can ask ourselves the question, is this going to be an approximate or an accurate approximation, I should rather say, for the area of a circle? And this is going to be answered by my Python program. And as you can see, this turned out so magically and I'm so satisfied with how such a simple woodworking problem escalated once again, just like with the router table. It's so ridiculous and it's so nice. And I hope you did um, enjoy what you have seen today. By the way, I forgot the squared right here and you can simplify this a bit more by factoring out a four, bringing it to the front and factoring out the R squared divided by N here, giving you an, a bit of a nice expression, basically, as you have seen in Python. But other than that, don't forget to check out our shops to um, support the channel a bit financially. And other than that, I wish you guys a flamble day. Uh, please stay safe and please watch the next episode of the Advent Calendar too. See ya, ciao. Yeah.